This is the kidney board and it's divided into three sections. We have the first section which is a cross section of the entire kidney. Then we take an insert of this section which I kind of just call the middle and then we take an insert of one of these and it's right over here. So this is the nephron because all it is is part of a nephron right here. Alright, so going back to the kidney itself what we do is we divide the outside of the kidney and the inside of the kidney. The inside is called the medulla and the medulla is made up of pyramids which are these striped appearances here. So here's one, here's another, here's another. Um, and on the outside we have all this dotted stuff. This dotted stuff is the cortex. It's got blood vessels running throughout it and part of the cortex runs up between the pyramids. So you see this dotted appearance extends in here. This is also part of the renal column. So the column the cortex, the medulla are important because these are forming the urine and then they deliver it to this yellow area here which is called the renal pelvis. Now the renal papillae is this area right here or right here. It is the junction between the pyramid and the pelvis, the renal pelvis. Now the renal pelvis itself is divided into major and minor calyces. Um, three to five major calyces and several minor calyces per kidney. The renal pelvis is going to take urine and store it and move it towards the ureter and this is the ureter leaving the kidney. So that includes major kidney structure. We also have the renal artery in red and the renal vein in blue. And following that we'll start looking at blood supply because urine formation comes from the blood supply. So the renal artery will start splitting once it gets into a kidney and you will have blood vessels that run up the sides of the pyramids. These are the interlobar, so between the lobes, arteries and, and veins. Now the veins are not shown everywhere but here's a great example of both of these. Now as they come up they curve and when it starts to curve here, this curve throughout and across is called the arcuate, arc for curve, arcuate artery and vein. And off the arcuate we have several blood vessels that continue up. These blood vessels that continue up are called the cortical radiate arteries and veins, as you can see the veins up here, or they can be called interlobular arteries and veins, depending on the source that you're reading. All right, moving to the middle here. This is that arcuate artery and vein. So down here we have medulla. This stuff up here is cortex. This is a cortical radiate artery and vein. And off of those you have a blood vessel called the afferent arterial. And that is going to go to this round dot, which is the glomerulus. It's the same thing that we see right here, the glomerulus. So the glomerulus will filter blood and create what is called filtrate and that filtrate is going to enter a tube. This is the long tube that it enters. It keeps going and going and going over to here and it will be highly modified in that tube. The first part of the tube which we see in green here is the proximal convoluted tubule also called PCT. As we follow this around we get down and we see this loop structure this loop is called the loop of Henley and then it comes back up to another area that's a different color here and this one we can see is highly convoluted. This is called here or here the proximal convoluted, I mean sorry, distal convoluted tubule. Proximal is first and closer to the glomerulus. Distal is far away from that glomerulus from a length of flow. The DCT, distal convoluted tubule, delivers what is now urine to this long line which is the collecting duct. And the collecting ducts help create the striped appearance that we see in the pyramids themselves. Alright, moving on to the nephron over here. This is our afferent arterial. It will have a larger diameter than the smaller blood vessel leaving it which is called the efferent arterial. 
So blood enters the afferent arterial, goes to the specialized capillary bed called the glomerulus, and what is left will leave via the efferent arterial. On the glomerulus, we have cells. These are called podocytes. The lines between the cells are called pedicels, and the spaces that you see between the lines and cells are called slit pores. This little structure up here is called the macula densa. Now, what's around all of this? Notice there's a space here between the glomerulus and this capsule. This is the Bowman capsule or glomerular capsule. This is the space where the filtrate accumulates and then moves towards the proximal convoluted tubule here. So the cell type here is simple squamous and down in the proximal convoluted tubule we move to simple cuboidal tissue. That covers this wonderful nephron board.